Hi guys, it's Patrick here from BFS Wargaming. So today we're going to talk about the upcoming September FAQ. So we think it's coming in September, but um, the last FAQ was a month late or maybe a couple of months late. So um, I think it was a couple of months late actually. So I'm not sure if they're moving this one back or if they're going to bring it out in September. But let's jump in and... Um, yeah, let's talk about it. So it's going to be split up into three things. So first off, we're going to talk about what I think will come out in the September or some of the things that I think will come out in the September FAQ. So I think that firstly, the beta rule for deep strike. Um, so you can only deep strike out of your deployment zone after turn one. I think that will will come in and be an actual rule. Um, I think there might be a small twist to it or some armies might get stratagems for ways around this, that type of thing, some that might be a little bit crippled by this. So maybe, for instance, Grey Knights, who sort of rely on that alpha strike, um, or maybe Blood Angels, that, that sort of type of army, or they might be given something which helps them. Um, and then I also think will happen is, I think that Drukhari are going to get a... A little increase in points. I say a little increase in points. It might be a big increase in points. I can't see it being sort of more than... I think what will get increased is maybe some weapons. Stuff like um, disintegrator cannons. Because they're very, very good. And I think maybe, you know, they're just as good an option as a Dark Lance. But they're fifteen, uh, sorry, 5 points cheaper. So they might go up and be a similar price to a Dark Lance. Um, and then you've got... Taluses may get an increase. Uh, I'm not sure they really need an increase. Maybe some of their weapons might need an increase. Um, I think it's the fact you can take so many of them. Maybe they might take change other stuff. They might you might not allow be allowed to take them um, in units of three. So maybe you'll only allow be allowed a maximum of three instead of being able to take nine. Uh, also, grotesques I think will get a bit of a points increase just because they are very cheap. They're good, really good unit, um, and they're very cheap. So there might be some things like that. So across the board, you might see to people's list, there might be like 100 points, 150 points increase um, to people's lists when they take them. Um, but I don't think it's not going to cripple. The, well, I hope it won't cripple the Drukhari um, because I think as an all-round codex, it is the best codex. They've got loads of good options, which is great. This is what, what we want out of the codex is we want to have lots of options. Um, other things that may happen, um, points increases, maybe Custodia Shield Captains, maybe the bikes. Um, I don't think the bikes should be increased. Maybe, again, they should decrease the amount of bikes you're allowed to take. So maybe you're only allowed to take units of three. So you'd only be allowed a maximum of nine bikes, which maybe would make things uh, a bit fairer in armies rather than just taking this massive load of bikes. Um yeah, because I feel like custodies are very limited without the bikes, and you don't want to put them up too much because then custodies won't be usable. Um, yeah, other than those, I think um, you're going to see some other points decreases um, coming from, or increases or decreases coming from the competitive scene. So um, one of the things I've heard a lot of people talking about is the Shining Spears from the craft world. Um it's sort of almost the things you can do with maybe some of the things you can do with these things need limiting rather than necessarily the points, you know. I think the whole Inari thing needs to be looked at. Um, but again, I'm not sure what they're going to be doing with that. Then, um, so let's go on to the look at the competitive side. Um, so if you, there's a lot of people saying at the moment that Castle and Knights need a points increase or something needs to do with them because there's a very popular list at the moment which is Castle and Knight, uh, three captains, Blood Angel Slam captains as they call them, um, and a load of Imperial Guard for a load of command points. Now, I don't think that the Castle and Knight is the problem, I think that the command points is the problem, personally. I mean, um, I could be completely wrong. This is just my opinion, as these things are. So I think with all of these soups and everything else, there should be uh, limitations. So, for instance, if you're taking an Imperial Guard to farm a load of command points, so this is the problem. The Castle and Knight on its own is probably okay, it's good. But when you are allowed to put stratagem after stratagem on it, 
and make it that much better, that's when it becomes a problem because then it comes from a good unit to an amazing unit and probably overpowered. So what I think, and maybe a lot, I'm sure other people have come up with this idea, but what I think would be a good idea is, so the detachments you get from the Imperial Guard detachment can only be spent on Imperial Guard stratagems. And as well as if you've got the Reddick or Warlord trait where you can roll to get command points back, you have to put them back in the pile of the person that has that Warlord trait. So if it's a, an uh, Imperial Guard um, Warlord, then that means that the command points you get back go back onto the Imperial Guard command points list um, pile. And I think the three you get for being Battleforged, they should be able to be spread and spent wherever you want. So if you've got them three, they can, three can be spent on that Castle and Knight. But having three command points to spend on a Castle and Knight is uh, a lot, lot less than 18, 20, or how many you're going to get back from farming plus the ones. So yeah, I think that would help solve, not maybe solve the problem, but I think it would help with the whole soup problem. I think the only exception is probably should be chaos. I think if you've got an army where you've got, for instance, Death Guard and Nurgle Demons, um, I think they should be spread because I think as long as they're, sh they're all sharing the Nurgle keyword, I, th I, don't, I can't see that being a problem because I feel like they're meant to be played together. Um, in in that way uh and to be honest death guard can just take loads of pox walkers um but i don't think you should be able to spread them if you're taking a, a detachment of noble demons and a detachment of empress children who are quite clearly slanesh um i don't think you should then be able to cross over you have to share that god keyword um but yeah that's just my little idea on how i think that you could solve that problem in competitive play um by making these units extremely powerful um, with all the command points. I think if you just take um, those command points, so all the Imperial Guard command points, if they're only being spent on the Imperial Guard infantry, they're probably not gonna be anywhere near as good and then makes the list not as good. It's probably still a good list, but it just makes it not as good as it was. So I think that is one way to solve that problem. I think because you don't want to completely stop it because I think it is a good thing that you can mix and, and match things. Um, it's just that, and obviously in competitive play, you're trying to make it as competitive as possible. So at the moment, that's the rule. So people are going to do it. But I think, yeah, it just needs to be just tinkered with and um, it should sort it out. Um, yeah, so that was sort of my... Uh, big idea for the new uh, maybe it could be brought in as a beta rule a new beta rule for the faq um i think that would be pretty cool uh the other thing i'd like to see is i'd like to see i'd like gw to take a look at all the units that aren't being used not necessarily competitively but the units that aren't being used generally day to day on the tabletop um this is something which frustrates me um for instance I, one of the armies I play is Necrons. Now there's a few units in the Necron Codex which just are not worth taking. Um, even as, I mean you can take them in a fun match, narrative match and stuff like that. Um, but even in a fun match you're like, because you still want to be able to be competitive in terms of you still want it to be a good game. But if you're taking something like a Doom Scythe, it's just, it's just not good. So what I'd like to do is I'd like them to either adjust the points on those things or look at the actual data sheet and see what needs to be changed on it to make it worth the points and i'm not saying to make these the best unit in the game just make them better um there's a lot of things that i think needs to be done with i think land raiders need to be looked at because i don't think people are really using land raiders because why not take two predators because two predators you're going to get you know more probably um firepower uh, the only thing with predators is you can't move and shoot um, without getting a penalty, to, a penalty for heavy weapons. But you've got more wounds, um, and you're looking at around the same point. So uh, I just, I just think I'd prefer to take two predators than I would one land raider. I think a land raider could do with a five up invulnerable for how expensive it is. I mean, it's like three hundred and it's nearly, it's nearly not the same price as a knight, as a as a normal knight, and it's nowhere near as durable, nowhere near. So I think that really needs to be looked at. Um, and there's other units in the game. I, I just think they need to go look at each codex and say, right, this unit, this unit, and this unit, 
No one's using them. How can we make people use them? Like I'm saying, don't let's not make them OP. I'm using OP overpowered because it's just an easy word to to use. But um, not I'm not saying it's making the best unit in the codex. Let's just make it so people can go. Oh, actually, I'll take these today, or I can take these. Like and so let's make it. Obviously, you're gonna have things in a codex where which are extremely good, which are better than a lot of the other stuff in the codex. Yeah, and they're like your your power units, but. Also, let's make the other stuff like usable, and so people are like, oh yeah, I'll take that today, or I can. So you've got more variety in the lists that you can take because I think that's what we want. We want variety in the lists we can take because otherwise, if you're playing the same things over and over again, it just gets boring. And also, from a uh, monetary point of view for GW, the more units that are good, like at the moment, I don't think people are buying Doom size or night sides people aren't buying monoliths um people are buying tesseract vaults but they're definitely not turning them into uh, into um obelisks because they are terrible probably the worst unit in the codex for the points not probably they are the worst unit in the codex for points um yeah there's just things like that and you know just look at go back go through the codexes look at what needs to be changed i mean i think the space marines codex probably needs to be looked at a little bit um maybe some points adjustments with some of that um because at the moment i don't think space marines are very uh competitive um i think they've got a lot of weaknesses that need to be looked at i mean they haven't got much with the fly keyword when you look at a lot of the xenos races like necrons like drukari um eldar in general they've all got a lot of fly which as we know fly keyword is very very strong um yeah, so I think they're sort of my predictions at the beginning and then a little bit of talk and maybe an idea to help with competitive play um, and then some things that I'd like to see personally that I think would just be good for everyone across the board just to give us more variety, more stuff to do. I think GW are doing a really good job with um, FAQs and rule changes. I don't think I've seen anything that's been nerfed like completely like for instance they done a points raise on hive tyrants biovores uh dark reapers in the last faq and i think people are still using them all um maybe not as much but they're still using them so they haven't nerfed them to the point where they're not usable which is not what we want to be they've been nerfed to the because they probably needed to go up in points which is what i think they'll do with drukari i don't think they'll over um increase the points i think they'll just give it a nice uh give a few things points so overall those lists you'll just get a few less models in them which is what i think it could do with um i mean the knights codex people are saying oh the knights are really strong and they're still early i think it's still not that long that the knights codex has been out um and i think if you're taking a pure knights list i don't think i think they're strong um but most armies have enough firepower to be able to to deal with it. You just have to take that firepower. And competitively, it changes. It has changed the meta in terms of people now just aren't taking loads of volume of shots. They're now like, okay, we need to take a few higher powered weapons um, in case we come up against knights, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, it'll be interesting to see once the Orcs Codex comes out as well and the Gene City Cult Codex. Um, how they change the meta. Um, but yeah, I think 8th edition so far is going really well. I think they're going to do some more good changes, maybe another couple of beta rules to make, see if we can, uh, see if they can improve the game even more. Um, like I said, I think they're doing a really good job. And yeah, I can't wait to see what comes out. Um, I'm hoping that most of the changes are good changes and I'm hoping that None of my armies uh, become too damaged by it. I think I'm hoping, if anything, a lot of my armies are um, more playable because of it, or I've got more choice throughout my armies. Um, and then, obviously, this sort of also um, what we're talking about also is with chapter approved as well, because th all this stuff probably won't happen in the FAQ that I'm talking about, and I mean probably not all of it will happen at all. But some of it will happen in the FAQ, um, and I think I'm hoping some more of that will happen in chapter approved as things go on. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to 
seeing it and um i don't know whether it's coming this month it's meant to be coming in september but we'll see and uh yeah thanks for listening um let me know what you think uh like comment below tell me what you think is going to change in the faq if you've got any ideas of ways to um maybe change things for the better also what units in your codexes do you think just aren't playable and either need a points decrease or they need the data sheet change to be worthy of the points so let me know what you think and uh yeah we'll uh, have a bit of a discussion about it thanks for listening and i'll see you in the next one